as you can see i have a plot three uh, libraries which are the pandas spd numpy as np and matplotlib.5 plot as mp first of all we read the data by using the read function so and uh, here i am showing you my data so here you can see there are total uh, 12 uh, attributes now i will show you the my uh, what is the shape of this data shape function is generally used to showing the number of rows and columns in your data so there are 1599 pro 1600 rows and uh, 12 columns then we have checked the null values uh, is there any null value present in that first of all we generally d1 dot is null is used to predict the null values like uh, if uh, here there is no such value you can see here there is a nan it means it has a null value but 0.0, .0 is not a null value so it is predicted true because it is nan it is a null value then we do, uh, put the dot sum function dot sum function is used to calculate uh, in which attribute we have how many null values and the dot sum again function is used and it is uh, uh, fixed SAT then dot sum function is again used uh, dot sum function is used to uh, check which uh, uh, when, when a total number of null values here then uh, we generally remove the null values uh, first of all we fill the uh, null values with the zero so we use the fill any function to uh, convert those values to zero like nn is now converted to 0, 0.00 then uh, there is a d2 volatile we have taken the mean like uh, you can see here there is the four null values in the volatile acidity and two null values in the chlorides so we clear it one by one first of all we clear for the volatile acidity so we take the taken the mean and by using the replace function we replace the null values so here you can see we can replace 0.0, .0 to 0 0.52 so here you can see it is replaced then for the uh, chlorides we have taken the mean of that and then using the replace function we replace the values and after that we have checked whether uh, all are removed or not null values so here you can see all uh, values are removed now then we use the uh, one hot encoding uh, one hot in the one hot encoding uh, we have created a new column which is the good quality and in the in that column we uh, put these values and uh, using this for loop like one if uh, x is if x is greater than uh, six then put it as one else if it is not greater than six then put it as zero this is for the x in d4 quality which and the quality is the target variable so here you can see that uh, there is a new attribute is added here which is the good quality and uh, zero if it will give you zero if the x is uh, less than the six so five six these all are the less than six, six. if uh, if i uh, if i return the five here then from this six it will uh, show you the one here the zero represents the bad quality and one represents the good quality now creating the feature variables and the target variables in the feature variables we drop the column quality and good quality and so that we have the about 11 attributes which are the fixed to alcohol then y we have uh, taken the target variable which is the y y equals to d for good quality as you can see here this this is our target variable we have counted how many we have the ones and how many we have zeros so there are one three two eight eight two zeros and two hundred seventeen ones then after that we standardize the data so that it will be in the range of zero to one minus one to zero or minus one to one uh, here you can see from sklearn dot preprocessing class we import the standard scalar function 
and using the fit trans uh, fit transform we standardize the x x x we standardize the x and x here is the uh, feature variables these all these we standardize all these then after that we splitting the data by using the model selection class and training testing split function training testing split function we give the text size as 0.2 pass the two parameters x and y split it in x train x test y train and y test and giving it a, a random state 40 then we are calculating the length of all these four values so length of the x train is 1 to 7 and similarly the y train is for the 1 to 7 9 the length of the x test is c20 and length of the y test is c20 modeling and training the data for the svm algorithm so from here we apply all the algorithms one by one first of all we apply the svm algorithm uh, uh, first of all we model the data from sklearn.svm import the svc svc is uh, the function which i am talking about then uh, we store this function in the model one and then we use the fit function to train our uh, data so, so here you can see the data of our model is trained now then by using the score function score function is generally used to check the accuracy of the data set so we have checked the accuracy of the x train and y train but generally we have to check the accuracy of the x test and y test so after checking it we got 0 0.875 which is about 87.5% then uh, we have predicted the, uh, then predicting the values model dot one dot predict and then passing the x test so here you can see uh, y test these are the uh, original values actual values uh, which have to become after uh, passing this x test which we expected uh, that it will give these type of values in the uh, uh, after predicting x test so we have stored this prediction function in the predict pred one then i have shown you the pred one so it gives us the array array form but i want this type of form which is in uh, which gives also the index number then uh, i have uh, used the data frame function to convert the array into the data frame so that we have the index number and it is much similar like this so I've converted this into the data frame and uh, you, here you can see D we have stored this pad one into the DF it is basically not a necessary step but uh, I have to use it then we classify the data for the precision uh, recall and F1 score for that we have a library uh, um, dot matrix sklearn dot matrix and from that library we import the classification report to function in the classification report function we pass two parameters first we pass the y test which is the actual values and the pred one which is the predicted values after printing the classification report here you can see this is the precision recall and f1 score for all these three then we plot a pie chart between the good quality and bad quality wines uh, so here in the comp list i have given the uh, good quality and bad quality values we have used the labels so that we can label these like good quality and bad quality then we use a pie chart and uh, we have used the auto pct function so that it shows us the percentage here we have also used the mp dot show function show function here uh, is used to remove uh, arrays uh, if you do not uh, put the show function it will show you the pie chart but along with this it will show some type of data which is written above on the pie chart to remove that data we use the show function here now that's for all about the SPM algorithm now we remodeling and training the data for the decision tree algorithm similarly like the SPM algorithm we first uh, model the data and like uh, from the tree class we import decision tree classifier then we uh, call the, uh, then we create the model and uh, call the decision tree classifier function then we train the model by using the fit function again passing the x train and y train as the parameters then we calculating the score which is the accuracy of the training, training set 
so accuracy is about 100% and the scoring is uh, of about uh, S test and Y test it is about 0 0.89 which is 89% then we predicting the values by passing the S test as a parameter in the and storing it in the PLAT2 then we convert it into the data frame and after uh, and storing it in the DF1 then we classify the data uh, by using the classification report uh, here as we already uh, if you here you can see that where is that Uh, I have already import this uh, library so we do not have to import again and again for the classification report for each model so I have directly called the classification report and passing the white test and uh, prediction actual and, actual and prediction values then we plot the pie chart uh, like labels and then uh, good qualities and bad qualities values then show function and then after modeling and training the data for the random forest classifier this is the last algorithm which I have used here from the nscalearn.ensemble class we have imported the random class forest classifier function and we call it, we train it, we check the accuracy of the X train and Y train and uh, checking the accuracy of the uh, test function then we predict the function, it, uh, the accuracy comes about 0 0.90 which is about 90% then storing it in the PRED3 prediction values are storing in the PRED3 then converting it into a data frame then we use the classify function classification report uh, to uh, classification report and uh, plotting the again the pie chart uh, by giving the bad quality and good quality values so here now from here we are plotting the graphs of the prediction of the good and bad qualities for the SVM algorithm this is for the SVM algorithm I have plotted a bar graph which is if it is good quality then it will show you zero and it will show you nothing uh, because it will be here so it will not go into this type of line these lines means uh, these lines means the good quality bad quality uh, have no such lines to clear this doubt uh, where are the bad qualities have gone I have also plotted the sc uh, scatter uh, plot function so here you can see yeah, at the zero line these are the bad qualities and these are the bad qualities which are not uh, being visible to you and uh, these are the one which is the good quality and these lines are the are these dots so similarly uh, we have used uh, the bar function for this uh, bar function to plot this uh, bar graph we have also used a color font size then x label and y label and uh, title then uh, for plotting the scatter plot function we scatter plot graph we have used the scatter function and inside that we have passed the df dot index uh, which is uh, the and the pred one then after that uh, we have plotted the uh, good quality and bad quality graph for the decision tree algorithm so here are here is the bar graph and here is the scatter plot graph of the decision tree algorithm then for the random forest algorithm here is the bar graph and here is the scatter plot function then plotting the bar graph for the prediction of good and bad quality for all the ml algorithms in one go means i have plotted all the three algorithms in one single graph so you can see here uh, it, this includes all the three algorithms and uh, uh, by using the scatter plot you can see here that uh, it has if you see there is some red lines which means it is behind the green line uh, here you can see that some of the green dots, some are the red dots. Green is for the random forest dot, uh, red dot is for the decision tree classifier, and there are also some blue uh, dots uh, behind these, which is for the SVM. And the SVM is not so good. Plotting a, then plotting a bar graph between the accuracy of all the three ML algorithms. For that, we I have created a list ACC. Then in that list, I will append all the accuracy uh, of uh, the three algorithms then I have given the name one by one then I have show you the here are the here are the accuracy of all these three algorithms and uh, 
this is these are the name and uh, here you can see by using the bar graph again i have floated the svm algorithm decision tree classifier and random forest uh, accuracy from this bar graph you can uh, see that random forest uh, has the best accuracy uh, among uh, all these three algorithms then we plot the confusion matrix for all the ml algorithm for that we have to first uh, import the sk learn dot matrix uh, class and from that we have to import the confusion matrix and then uh, if we use only this type this function then we get only this type of matrix this type of matrix you can see here but uh, i want to show it as a diagram so i have to use the c1 uh, library uh, c1 library is generally used to plot the heat map i will show you what is the heat map is for uh, then confusion matrix for the svm algorithm what what, uh, what i have done here is uh, we have i have done the confusion matrix for the actual and predicted values then store it in the real then printing the result shows the confusion matrix like this then i have used the heat map you can see it we have used the heat map function and inside it i have passed the result in the result we have the confusion matrix uh, and then i have passed the n north function which is the true and uh, here what is the n north function means n north function means uh, it will show you these these values 270.0 2.0 38.0 10 10.0 if we remove this function then uh, we will only able to see this uh, four uh, these four parts and not the value written inside this then we use the cmap the cmap function is used to, to color this uh, confusion matrix heat map and then fmt function is used uh, uh, because uh, if i am not using the fmt function uh, i am here getting the value of, uh, uh, instead of 270 i am getting the 2.7 plus e raised to the power 2 which i am not able to understand what that means is so i have used the fmt function so that it is clear uh, uh, actual values are here uh, in the y axis and the predicted values are in the x axis uh, then there is a confusion matrix for the similarly decision tree classifier algorithm which is stored in the result one then by the help of the heat map i have shown this decision tree classifier uh, confusion matrix this this one is the true positive and uh, this one is the true negative then confusion matrix for the random forest classifier algorithm result two which is equals to confusion matrix y test and pred three then storing it the into the result two then uh, showing the confusion matrix and by using the heat map function i have shown you the confusion matrix in a like diagram then after that plotting the roc curve for all the 3 ml algorithms for that i have imported the function roc auc score which is used to calculate the auc score and the roc curve the roc curve is used to plot the curve uh, then for uh, plotting the roc curve for the decision tree classifier algorithm first for that we use the predict dot prob a function uh, this and inside this we have passed the x test para, uh, as a parameter then uh, we have used the probs one and uh, slicing slice it uh, like if we in the probs one uh, if we put the zero inside instead of the one then the line of the graph will be like uh, this as a in the down side and by the using of one we get got the line uh, from the upper side above side not uh, from the diagonal side uh, for that like here you can see that this is the roc curve or the decision tree classifier i have do, uh, created this dotted line by using the plot function oh sorry ha uh, yes plot function plot function uh, it gives the index of 0 to 1 which is the x axis 0 to 1 then this 0 1 is will gives the 0 to 1 for the y axis and the line style here it means the 
creating the diagonal line which is dotted if i remove this uh, line style that it is a plain line like this okay then we um, inside uh, then we calculate the auc score and uh, put it in the auc1 to calculate the auc score we have used the function roc underscore auc underscore score and uh, we have given two parameters which is the y test and uh, props one props one is the predicted values which I have, we have predicted here and uh, y test is the actual values and after printing we have got 78 0.78% then after that we have used the fpr tpn and threshold function uh, the FPR is the false positive rate, TPR is the true positive rate and we have used the ROC curve function to plot the ROC curve. Wait, wait, wait. FPR, TPR, we have generally put the, uh, give, them, give the values to the FPR and TPR. Then we have used the plot function uh, and passing the parameters FPR and TPR and giving the color as red so that we have these line, red function, red as you can see then uh, we have given the title x label y label like this color font size etc etc then we have plot the roc curve for the random forest classifier like we have generally calculated the aoc score then i have plotted this uh, random forest classifier and uh, similarly for the roc uh, and for the svm algorithm so this is the worst roc curve i have seen till time Seriously, I have not seen this ever before. This is the first time it happened to me. And uh, from all these, uh, from all these uh, L three algorithms, uh, I have seen that uh, random forest is the best algorithm for my data set. And uh, hope that uh, in future uh, I am also work on the major data set like around thirty thousand to forty thousand rows, as I work on around uh, sixteen hundred rows only. So thank you guys for being here and uh, listening my presentation. Thank you.